We're live. Uh, my name is Linda Falcone, and I'd like to welcome you here with Restoration Conversations on behalf of Calliope Arts and the Florentine with Walter Guadagnini, who is the co-curator of this exhibition called Photographe or Women Photographers here in Florence at the Villa Bardini. Walter is a art historian turned photography expert, both contemporary photography and historical photography. So thank you so much for talking with us today, Walter. Thanks to you for the invitation. I'm sorry for my English, naturally. In advance, <laughs> <I'm starting>. right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just start from here. <laughs> uh, we're here in the smallest room of the show, and but it's one of the most content-filled rooms. And we're here with Van der Wolfs, representing her sister, Marian Woltz. And if you could tell us a little bit, first of all, about the premise of the show, what you were trying to achieve. We know it's a dialogue between women of the past and women of today, which is one of our favorite things. And I speak for our guests tonight as well. We love to see these bridges being built. Yes, okay, we, we actually, we, we started inside the uh, Ardinari archives. And uh, in the Ardinari archives, we found so many works by women photographers, starting from the mid uh, of the 19th century. And many of them were more or less unknown. Some of them were known, but not so much. And so we started this, this research. And it was a, a wonderful adventure, I would say, because uh, we, we, we discovered so many things, so many works and so many biographies, which are really interesting because you, you understand what uh, it meant being a woman uh, trying to be a photographer mm -hmm. in the mid 19th century. Right. So it was a really a, a, an interesting research, which was done mostly by Emmanuel Sesti, who was the, the, the other, the co-curator. Co of the show. But at the same time, we, we wanted also to uh, not to let only the, the ancient works, the early works of photography to speak, but we wanted to make this dialogue between the past and the present. And the present means to find, we tried to find, and I hope we did it, we made it, we made it uh, to find uh, some photographers, some women photographers working now in Italy, yeah. very young ones, and trying to make this dialogue, if, if any. Right. I remember we, we actually spoke about it before the show was on the wall. Yes. And you had said, Linda, it's going to be great if it works. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes but it did. It did work. This I, I cannot say if it works or not. It's uh, it's the audience who has, or you can say it works or not. We try to do it, and uh, because you know, it's uh, it's not so easy, actually, as a, as a conceptual idea. It it can work naturally. The dialogue between past and, and present is not a uh, news naturally. It was, it has been done so many things, but uh, but when you put together in in the same room, like here, for example. Uh, which is a very small room, so the, the dialogue, dialogue is very close. You never know what happens. Also because it's very simple, but here you have uh, uh, black and white photographs yeah. and color photographs, which is not so easy, for example, as, right. as, a, as, a, as a contact. And so we, we tried, and uh, the, the most important thing, I, I, I think, is, is, has been to, to choose the right young photographers. Right. Because, uh, you know, with, the, with the, the history, it's in some sense uh, easier. Yes. Because yes. You, you work on a, on a stable ground, so to say. Right. While with the, with the young photographers, it's much more complicated, naturally. It's risky. It's and there are really 10. risky. There are 10 yes. photographers. There are 10. They are in their, uh, between their 30s and their 40s. So they are really young. They are all Italian. We needed to have uh, something in order to, to, to find uh, right. uh, some, some borders. Right. And, uh, but it's also interesting, always uh, about talking about uh, biographies, because many of them uh, are Italians, but they live and work uh, outside of Italy, mm -hmm. in Europe mostly. Mm -hmm. So also this 
says something about uh, our contemporary world. Why naturally the the, the woods or the many others who, uh, photographers uh, coming from the past they tell us about uh, what was right. the world. Right. And it wasn't uh, a, a very easy work for for women photographers uh, until until. 20 years ago, so to say. Right. Walter, can you tell us, can we start with Wanda Woltz? Because we know yes. she's the star of the show. <laughs> uh, certainly the most famous photographs yes. in the show belong to Wanda Woltz. And can you tell us a little bit about her and what she is trying to achieve with the self-portraiture? Yes. yes, Wanda Woltz is uh, actually, as you say, the, the star in some sense of the, of the show. She is the most renowned one. But for example, here we see Van der Wolf uh, photographing, portraying her sister, uh, Marion. And so we have an, a dialogue in the dialogue, I mean, uh, in, in, the fr in front of her, not by chance. If I can just ask can. the filmmakers to come. Yeah. In front of her, we can, well. we can see that uh, Marion is photographing Vanda. So it's a kind of self-portrait is a sister portraying another sister. And, uh, and it's a, a very interesting story. Uh, Wanda was, uh, so to say, the, the front runner of the two. Right. Marion preferred to, to be more in uh, the rest, in the, uh, to be in the shadow. Uh, Wanda uh, was famous mostly because of uh, her, because she was one of the futurists, she was part of the futurist group. Yes. She did one of the icons of Which we're going futurism, to see. yes, going that to see. we will see. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, it, with this exhibition, for example, we, we, we aim to show not only the very famous Van der Wolf's works or Marion Wolf's works, but uh, a selection of the uh, big work they did in their, in their career. We have to consider that uh, the, the Alinari archives uh, own the whole archives of the Wolf sisters. Yes. So we had the possibility, the chance of uh, doing a research in depth in, this, uh, in these archives. Walter, can I just ask, there's something that, that calls my attention as we're looking from one sister to the other. And, and particularly, for example, if we look at the Egyptian yeah. uh, pictures and we see that you know, they, they are playing with the camera and they're playing with the exchange of roles, right? As author, as model, um, on both sides of the lens. And this is something that you see a lot in their collection, no? Yes, because you, you have to consider that they started as models for their father. Their father, Carlo, had a studio, a photographic studio in, in Trieste. Yeah. So they. Do you want to? Do you want to just take a, a walk to, to this side? Yes. So that, so that yes. perhaps why not? See. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. So you're telling <laughs> no, us no, no, no. that uh, and, Carlo uh, was working in Trieste. He yes. was at the top of his game. Yes. And they were two perfect models for for him. Then when he died, they uh, took the, the the studio. They continued their father's uh, work. And naturally, this idea of being photographers, but being also a model is very important. And I would say it's one of the most important issues of probably the exhibition. Right. Because, you know, when you, when you deal with uh, women photographers, you often deal with the questions about identity, yeah, about uh, self affirmation yeah. in society and in family, for example. And this is very important. And you see with, with them, with uh, Vanda and Marion, you see it very, very clearly. Yes. It's, uh, and it's wonderful to see these two very young uh, girls and ladies working in a very important town, because now we think about Trieste uh, not as a, as a capital, but it was At capital. We are talking about the 20s and the 30s of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. so. It's the advent of the new woman as well. We yes. have um, we have here a mo the motorcyclist, yes. right? And just to remind our guests, this is Marian Waltz, okay, and she is doing portraits of her sister Vanda, the opposite of what we saw on the other wall. 
Yes, we have this this idea, this uh, idea of uh, the past and the future being together with them. Because you know, uh, you're right when you tell us about uh, this motorcycle uh, way of uh, of acting. But at the same time, we saw that this was this Egyptian yes. costume, which is very old fashioned. Right. Also, in the in the thirties, was already old fashioned. So they, they are both, they, they look at the tradition, but at the same time, they want to renovate it with their photography. We have to consider that photography was still a young medium. Yes. For us, is or a, a classical medium. Yeah. But in the 30s of the 20th century, it was, it was, uh, it was still new. It, yes, yes. I want to take a look at the contemporary artists and perhaps... It would be easier to start with Sophia, yes. um, and she definitely she's one of the one of the artists in the show or photographers in the show that looks a lot at self identity and self representation. So, what can you tell us about the Homesick series? Yes, uh, Sophia Usalengi works on on herself on herself as, as you see here uh, in uh, in uh, relation with uh, with the landscape. And she works a lot also, her, her poetics works a lot on what photography can uh, do in order to have a, a visionary uh, look at herself. Because it's, it's a self-portrait for sure, but as you see, it's not simply a self-portrait, but it's a transformation of the body in something that uh, has uh, uh, as a, as a, as a direct link with the uh, with the landscape, so it's uh, naturally she uses all the possibilities, some of the possibilities that are given us to to photography that are given to to the photographer by by the medium, right? Uh, and in, in this way, she uh, continues uh, a tradition which was the the real tradition of the new vision of the avant garde. Right. which liked so much this kind of tricks and all these kind of uh, things that can be made. Like the with, overlay, you know, the yes. overlay of images, the, the double exposure, yes, the right. double exposure, the, so all this kind the dream -like of... dreamlike feeling yes. of things, yeah. You know, coming yeah. From, from the avant-garde, from surrealism and so on. Right. They, and, they, and it still works. <laughs> this it is very does, interesting, it but it still works. It does. And it's called homesickness, yeah. you know, because she is... She's from Calabria yes. and um, has ended up in Milan, so from the south to the north. And she was telling me that at one point in her life, um, she really wanted to reconnect with her homeland, with where she was born. And this was her response to the feeling of moving and changing yes. and going to a different, um, a different reality. So it's, it, it's quite interesting to see you know, how you were saying before transformation, um, transformation on camera and transformation in life as well, um, yes. you know, which is reflected. And I'd ask Francesco if you could come on the other side so that we can <laughs> have a look at Federica Bedli. And I know that Walter has a lot to say about Federica. So um, <laughs> we have these, tell us about Federica as a photographer. Federica is, uh, first of all, I would say, I don't know if she is happy with that, but uh, with this underlying, but uh, she is uh, the youngest of the group of 10 young photographers. So it's, uh, it's a really some, uh, a photographer, an artist who has uh, come to the scene in very recent years. These are some of their... Uh, most known, well-known uh, works. And she deals with uh, more than with herself, with uh, the, the, the people there, uh, the, the girls who are around her. Right. So she works in trying to uh, make, as you see, portraits, always portraits, of uh, the people that are like her, that uh, share with her yeah. uh, the, the word. I mean, uh, not only the word as, as something uh, concrete, but the word of dreams, of uh, aspirations, all these kind of things. So this is her way. And we see, for example, sometimes, uh, for example, here, we don't see just a face, 
we see a double face here, one out of focus, the real one, so to say, and the other one uh, reflected in focus. Okay. So it's a sort of a contradiction yeah. in, the, in the same image. And on the other side, we don't have the face, we just have the, the hairs, these long hairs, and uh, the, the sea, which is naturally something that has much to do with, uh, with the symbolic idea of, of nature right. and so on. So these, for example, are two examples of, uh, of uh, Federica's uh, work. Not by chance, this is called uh, the lens mm. through which we see ourselves. Yes. So the, the idea of, uh, of a self-representation, right. once again, but also done through the others. This is very important because, you know, uh, photography is something that connects you with the others, mostly when you do uh, portrait photography. Because if you photograph a landscape, okay, you are, you are in relation with the landscape, but it's not. <laughs> uh, it's very personal. Uh, yes. With, with, yeah. While when you do a portrait of someone, you, you really have to be in touch with them, with him or her. Yeah, Walter, I was, I was actually, I had an opportunity to speak with Federica as well, and yeah. she was, re she was telling me that this particular series, um, she did as an adolescent, <laughs> and. The reason why she decided to take photographs of adolescents was was in that period of awkwardness when she, you know, there's a lot of fear in having relationships with others and forming relationships. She found that the camera was actually a medium to speak with other people and to relate to other people. So it's interesting, not just the finished product, but actually the action, you know, of, of photographing. Um, and doing a photographing series. So it's very related to what you're saying as well. Yes, we have to consider actually, uh, I, I don't want to, to, to be too, too much focused on this, but uh, I was just looking at the, at the caption and she, she was uh, 20 when she did uh, these uh, photos, three, right. to four years ago. Yeah. So it's, it's really something that comes probably also with a, uh, with a kind of an innocence which is uh, typical yeah. of this of this age, and it and it's important. Right. It's important also to know this: the the the, the works of art, the photographs, have to to speak by themselves, independently, in my opinion, from from the biography. But at the same time, sometimes the biography helps. Certainly, <laughs> certainly. And I think for for women photographers, I want you to lead us into the yes. next room, if you would. Okay. Um, because we have a nice big room. This one was was smaller, but as I said before, very full. Um, and, and we stayed a lot. In and it. we stayed <laughs> quite a bit, yes. But I think I think for good reason. And um, why don't we go in this direction okay. first? Because we get to go and see Marion Woods from a different point yes. of view. No, Walter. If you want to, perhaps go yes. there. Yeah. Okay, so here we're seeing something totally different. This is by Marian Woltz, and yes. this is a kind of uh, it could be something like a, a, a reportage, actually, because uh, she 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 was she she photographed from from her windows uh, the 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 days of the 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 last hours of war. Means the, the 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 title of the work yeah. is the last. Uh, hours of work at the beginning of, of May of 1945. Uh, so, you know, this is typical in some sense of the, 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 the photography, uh, which is not only uh, a, a profession, for example, for, for them it was a profession for sure. They, they were portraitists, they, yeah. they lived yes. from their portraits, from their portrait photography, from their studio photography. But at the same time, with photography, you can do so many different things, and also uh, being able to uh, have this kind of witness mm -hmm. of historical moments that can be private sometimes, sometimes are really uh, public, and this, in this case, is really something dramatic, naturally uh, tragic, yes. because we are talking about. A war and this in these days, yes, and right? in these days talking about war is once again, unfortunately, talking about uh, the news. You know? Right. 
But in any case, uh, we, we can see the, the, the difference of uh, what you can do with, uh, uh, with a camera. And this is what I think we, we see in the wall uh, Wulz mm -hmm. uh, section, so yeah. to say, but also in the wall uh, exhibition. We have different uh, uses of the camera. We have the, the portrait photography, we have the studio photography, but we have also the documentary photography. We have some wonderful works. Uh, you can see wonderful works by Dorothea Lang, by Margaret Burke White, and yes. so on. The great. It was a new yes. trend for women to be yes. doing reportage for sure. and um, documentary yes. photography. The Wolves has stayed more in the studio, and in fact, this was from her window. Yes. Right? She was inside. Um, but, but yes, it's, it's very interesting to see. I mean, here we have, this isn't exactly portraiture, uh, <laughs> yes. a, li a little bit more of Marty on here. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what, what do we see here? What is she trying to do? There's always a playfulness, you know, or off. Yes, this is, uh, it's also, uh, typical in some senses comes also from, uh, from the history of art. There was a, a famous, uh, sculptor and, and Rothman, uh, Messerschmitt, who did this kind of uh, works. So it's, it's something that, that, that happened, so to say, in, in not only in this period, but also starting from, okay, we, we could start also from Leonardo da Vinci and so on. It's, it's, it's a long story, so yeah. to say. Yeah. But naturally, with, with photography, you can do it uh, maybe also e in, in an easier way. Right. And in a very funny way, so it's also something that it it becomes a, a, a play, a game, right. uh, which is something that could be. At the same time, we have to consider once again that we look at it, look at these photographs as a game, as something funny and so on. But at the same time, we have to consider that this was, a, uh, in Italian, it's called Mimo. I don't know. Mime. Yes, Mime. mime. So, you know, it's something, maybe it's something that was used by this man for his profession. Right. So, right. you know, so no. He was this a professional is, mime. Yes. Okay. And this was 1954. Yes. Just to give an idea to our guests what, what time period we're looking at. Yes. The, 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 the Wolf sister worked for a long time. We, we always think about... Uh, 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 about uh, Vanda working with the Futurist group and so on. But this was actually just a small period of work. Right. It's the period for which she is known all over the world. But if we want to see uh, the whole work and the whole life, professional life, let's say, right. of, uh, of, of Vanda and of Marion, we have to look at a much longer period. More or less, more until than the 80s. No, they were. Yes, yes, yeah. they, they work until the 60s and yeah. then less naturally because the, the, the times they are right. changing. As right. no one, <laughs> what, a, what a difference! This is some of their of their studio photography. Yes. I want to I want to keep on moving through and um, perhaps Francesco, you can get the different areas. Um, but I, I wanted to invite you to talk to us. Yes. About on guard. Yes. Right? Um, yes. What's happening here? And this is still Marion. Yes. Um, we have a ballerina and we have a, um, a, a, an Olympian. No? Yes. An Olympian fencer. It's. Uh, it's. I. I think it's. Uh, it's fantastic because it's. Uh, this is Irene Camber, an Olympic winner, yeah. and it's. Uh, it's simply. Uh, uh, a wonderful <laughs> photograph. Uh, what what do you mean by, by a, a wonderful photograph? It means that uh, it's perfectly balanced from the formal point of view. It has this wonderful uh, face with the eyes looking right at the camera, a sort of uh, look at the camera, which becomes looking at us, yeah. looking, at the uh, looking at the photo. So it's a direct, once again, a, a contact between the photographer, the subject, and the public, which is quite interesting. And then there is this uh, idea of the, how do you say, the, the spada? The, 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 the sword. Yes, the sword, yeah, right. Uh, which you know that it's a sword, yeah. but you cannot see it actually. It's just uh, a circle 
but you know that there is something that it's it's a sword. So it's a, it's a wonderful portrait, really something that works. At the same time, also the dancer is very interesting because here everything is balanced. Here is balanced, but as a sort of something that is going out of balance. Yeah. And this is very, very interesting. That's why also we put them uh, together. Naturally, they, they, they were two single photographs put together for, uh, so to say, exhibition reasons. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that it, it works, seeing uh, this, this works together. And you, and you understand how this kind of staging photography can can work on uh, with with uh, with this kind of uh, subjects. Walter, I wanted to ask because here we have women doing physical activity, yes. right? In a posed way, but still, yes. you know, there is an Olympian and a professional dancer and I mean this is related in some way, you know, to the period um, when women are starting to become athletes and professional athletes and and where there's more liberalism, let's say, um, in, well, women's bodies are, are appreciated in a different way, seen in a different way, represented differently, which we'll see later as well. But that's a point that I'd like you to, to touch upon because I think, I think it gives a different meaning to the photographs as well, because with our modern eyes, we, we, we think that that's normal, but this was actually quite revolutionary, no? Yes, you're, you're totally right. You know, it's uh, 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 an exhibition like this is, is really something that helps you to focus on this kind of, of, of themes. Right. Uh, because, you know, as, as I said, I, I would start a little bit uh, from, from, from the beginning. When we, look at, uh, when we looked at the first uh, photographers of the mid 18th, 19th century, <laughs> We, we saw, we understood that they were really uh, people who were hidden behind yeah. their uh, men, behind their uh, husbands. Uh, uh, and you, you felt, you feel the difficulties they have to impose their individuality, right. their personality. They were just, uh, in some sense, some instruments working like, uh, they were like the camera, so to say. They had no, no identity. Yeah. We miss the identity of some of these uh, photographers. We just have their name, but not the, right. sur and the, the surname and so on. It's quite, and uh, the more you come into, let's say, the, the, the 20th century, the more you see that this uh, disposition uh, changes very slowly. We must say very slowly. Yeah. It's not that easy, but it changes, and you see it in different ways. You see it uh, in in the subjects, as you say, the the, the the sport women and so on begin to to take the the the, the stage, mm -hmm. and this is naturally something that uh, wasn't so normal at that time. Right. But also the photographers herself, themselves, began to be uh, recognized. Some of them, I mean, for example, Margaret Book Quiet and so on, began to be really the stars of the photographic scene. Yes. yes. And so you, you see that the, the changes of the society, you see the changes of photography and the changes of the society at the same time. This is very important and this is very I would say this is one of the, the reasons because it's very uh, interesting for, for, for me to uh, work on, on photography because uh, photography is so related to society. Yes. And when, when you look at a photograph, or, 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 uh, you, you look at, at, uh, at the society. Yeah. And you see it changing very quickly yes. with yes. photographs. Um, photography seems to change yes. immediately. It's an immediate phenomenon. Um, I, I wanted to ask if we could, because this point, um, you know, and women being, I, I find it fascinating, the expression that you use, the women actually being the camera, almost, yeah. you know, having no identity besides being the lens. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of examples that we'll find when we, when we move into the show, and, and certainly 
I'll remind you to talk about yes. that. <laughs> um, but I wanted to right now sort of enter into the heart of the, the futurist dialogue. Yes. Um, and to start with the founder of futurism, who's Martinetti. Yes. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about um, what we're seeing on this wall and yes. in general? Okay, we, we have to think that probably uh, futurism was the, the first avant-garde movement uh, strictly related to, to photography. Because if we think that uh, Anton Giulio Bragaglia wrote his uh, Photodynamismo Futurista in uh, 1914, uh, it's, it's the first time that, uh, right. because cubists or expressionists weren't interested in, in photography at all. Why futurists naturally thought that photography was something new, right. was something modern, was something. At the same time, they were a little bit suspicious about photography because it was too mechanical. Right. And they still wanted to have uh, the, the, the artistic touch, so to say. And so it's, uh, it's very interesting, a sort of contradiction inside of futurism. I, I, I say this because we see Marinetti liked so much to be photographed, yes. for sure. Yes. Uh, Vanda surprise, did. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yes. Vanda did uh, a wonderful portrait of, of him because this is a wonderful portrait, and I'm sure he was satisfied yes. about the very serious and, uh, face he has uh, here. But at the same time, we uh, we see that uh, she uh, we see that the real, so to say, futuristic language in photography comes out in the 30s. Yes. So quite late. Right. Actually, if, if we think that... So 15 that, years, more or less, yes. after yes. Bragaglia wrote yes. the manifesto, yes. let's say. Okay. Yes, so it's, uh, it's a complicated story. It's, uh, it's a story. It's a, it's a very typical, I mean, Italian story where, where the theory is very avant-garde but the practice is not so, it's much more conservative, so yeah, to say. Yeah. This is quite interesting. In any case, Van der Wood uh, did this, uh, this series of wonderful works uh, like this one, this uh, Viennese dancer, and uh, uh, in which we see the, the, the very typical subject of uh, the modernist culture, right. I mean, the, the dancer, and at the same time, the very typical uh, photographic, modern photographic language, which is done by this kind of, once again, as we talked about uh, Sofia Uslengi, these uh, double exposures, these mm, works in motion and so on. Yeah. Everything that gives us the idea of movement, of modernity, of mechanical, everything that was very liked in those uh, years, the, the age of the machine yes. were called these years. Yes. And it's not by chance. I, I think this is important to sort of concentrate on because you just summarized um, with modernity, with speed, with mechanical yeah. elements, you know, the goals and let's, we could say the guiding principles of futurism, um, you know, it's now considered, and it, and it was considered quite early by the 1940s, an extinct mm -hmm. movement, but um, you know, Marinetti, and I just, perhaps our guests need a refresher on, on <laughs> futurism, but Marinetti, you know, in, in his manifesto, um, which was 1909 Nine, originally, yeah. yeah, he was saying that, um, you know, they glorify war as the only hygiene of humanity yes. and, you know, uh, and hurry. also another big element, and I, I think it's important to say, was a scorn for women. Um, which is something that he then had to sort of backtrack on slightly. And he, you know, in Wanda's case, he was very, he very, he was very much an admirer of her. Um, but it was a very sort of militaristic and, and, you know, violent movement in some ways. And what they looked for um, was, on the one hand, to sort of do away with the past, yes. um, which considering that this was an Italian movement, that's saying a lot. You're basically doing away with everything. They didn't manage, thankfully, um, on the one hand, but also looking for the smear of madness. Um, 
in in the art. And and Wanda's, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, her her interest in futurism was actually very small. It was just a, qu a question of a couple of years, no? Yes, let's say more or less three or four, something three like four this. Years. It's not so much. Yeah, uh, it's not so. But you know, we are also uh, in the, in this same uh, exhibition. We have also the work by Edith von Arnaldi, right. which has been who has been uh, rediscovered, or we should say probably discovered now by uh, Cecilia Alemani at the Biennale in in, in Venice. Yeah, uh, because she, and she worked. Uh, the beginning of the, the futurist uh, period with the, uh, how do you say, the, the name uh, of uh, Rosa Rosa. Su pseudonym? I think yes. A pseudonym. Yes. No? Of Rosa pen Rosa. Name. Yes, pen, pen name. name. Pen name of, uh, and this is quite interesting too because she started as a writer and a drought woman and then uh, wrote also some so to say, proto-feminist yes. novels. Yes. It's, it's quite interesting. We don't have these uh, ideas, in, uh, in, uh, as far as we know, in, uh, in Van der Wolf. She was just a photographer. Right. She didn't right. want it to be, didn't want to be ideological as far as they no. know. But the uh, results of her research are really uh, important on an international level. I think it's it's not uh, we, we can say that uh, a work like Io più gatto is really famous worldwide. Yes, it's, it's really We're going to one see of that. the few uh, Italian photographs of the first half of the century, which is really worldwide renowned. Yeah, this is. Io Gatto, that's the cat and I. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go see her now. I just want to very quickly <laughs> walk <laughs> across nope. here. Uh, we see other double exposures as well. Yes. No? And, um, and also and this some jazz band, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the also jazz band, the dance, uh, the, the new music coming from the uh, USA, which were not actually uh, so okay. so friendly <laughs> but you, you know friendly. at, at, at yeah. that in that period no okay. it, uh, yeah. there was the censorship and so right. on but you know that the, uh, the music was able to to come also over this kind of uh, of things mm. luckily enough mm. and so just band was once again uh, uh, a declaration of modernity right. right and done by a woman Yes. Once again, it's not so. Now we, we know there are many drummers, uh, women drummers, and so on. But in the 30s, it was not so easy. So it was, it was revolutionary twice, yes. right? The music yes. and the fact that the player was yes. a woman. Right. Yes. I know that everyone is, is waiting for Io Gatto. <laughs> uh, and here yes. we are. Right. Yes, so I, could you tell us what's happening here and what we yes, need to be thinking this about? This is one of the uh, the reasons why, uh, when you have the possibility of working in an in an archive, you have to consider yourself <laughs> very lucky, <laughs> because you know uh, everyone has always uh, seen the final. Uh, result of the research of right. Van der Woods can, and this, yeah, this, this masterwork of uh, Io Più Gatto. Mm -hmm. But we have here the chance of seeing how it was done. Pre-Photoshop, right? Yes, without Photoshop. Yes, okay. no Photoshop. It, it came 50 years yes. later, more or less. Yes. So it's, it's, and you see here we have the two single prints, so to say, the self-portrait of 1932, and uh, her cat, simply her cat, nothing more than her cat, and uh, it's very nice, the, 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 the title. Yeah, can you, can you show which us is the title? Gatto um, less I. Yeah, Gatto minus I. Minus I. Yeah. While the final work, you see here the two negatives, the two silver gelatin negatives, 
with, we, with which she did this final uh, masterwork. So we have the, the, the whole process, so to say. And I think it's, it's really fascinating. Because, you know, it's, uh, it's like being uh, inside the studio. Yes. And this yes. is one of the, the, the great fascination of, uh, of working in this way. When you, when, you're, when you have the possibility. And that's why also we, we have to uh, take care of the archives, yes. uh, conserve it, and do all that we can do for, for better study, this kind of things, and have the possibility also for the future, naturally, of continuing this, this kind of uh, studies. So my, my, I, I think our guests are so happy about what you just said. This is, this is very much... <laughs> That's um, what I think. The, yeah, it's very much sort of the heart of restoration conversations and what we, yes. we try to do, right, is to, is to um, conserve and exhibit and study. Um, yes. And I, I do want to mention Calliope Arts in this case because this room and the, and the Wanda Waltz and Marian Waltz archive um, together with the archive of Arnaldi that you mentioned yes. before, are being rediscovered and, and um, studied thanks to a grant uh, for yes. the Alinari archive. So it's, it's very important that this work, um, you know, the public sees the exhibition, but as you said, it's very important also that we think about what's happening in the archives. And, yes. and from Alinari's point of view. It's a, it's a way of uh, looking also at the backstage. Yes. You know. And it's, I think it's always fascinating in, in the arts, in the music, every, everywhere. The, the backstage is interesting, in my opinion. Definitely. Listen, I'm asking you to lead me, if you don't mind. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we have a nude here, um, just very Sometimes quickly. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, exactly. Um, but this is Vanda's. I just, yes. perhaps we could just look at it with the camera, yes. and I'll, I'll keep leading you on to this other part of the. But we have our poster yes. girl, right? Um, and she's been seen all over the city for the show, which is partly here in Villa Bardini and partly up at Forte Belvedere. Yes. Um, and she doesn't have a name, if I'm yes. not mistaken. It's a, it's a portrait. It's a portrait. May, maybe future studies can give us the, the name. But I, I think it, that also this, uh, the, 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 the anonymous woman is, is fascinating is is some someone who comes from from the past for sure because it comes more or less from from the end of the of the 20s 1928 yeah but it's still so uh, a contemporary face i think it's not uh, and at the same time is a uh, it's a face with uh, how do you say with no time timeless timeless yes yeah, sorry uh, yes beginning she a sure is tired. beautiful. <laughs> I know. I said thank you for your English. It's rough, no? We'll go into the next room. Um, I think we have some contemporary photographers, and then we have some early photographers okay. as well um, that we can have a look. And tell me a little bit about the Alinari archives. Um, well, the Alinari archives are one of the uh, excellence, I would say, yes. of Italian culture. As you know, uh, it's one of the most important archives of, uh, of the world, I would say. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful history also. The one uh, which started in the mid-19th uh, century and arrives till now. That's also why uh, we, we were so convinced in doing this exhibition in this way. Right. Putting in dialogue uh, the history and the uh, and the now, the past. So from the, the mid 1800s, so yes. the, basically the advent of photography. Yes. Okay, and the Alinati yes. brothers. Yes. Right. To today. Till today, you know, in in different ways. Naturally, now it's uh, it's an archive. The Alinari is just it's just a name, so to say. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's a name which resonates with the beginning of photography, with something that started from here, because we have to think that the, the Alinari with their work changed, for example, our idea of history of art. Yeah. Because the history of art became something different after the work 
of the Alinari. Uh, Henri Marot and Le Musée Machinaire tells us this. Yeah, the Alinari uh, spent a lot of time photographing Italy. Yes, and so monuments, uh, right. uh, the, the churches, the works of art, yeah. the paintings, the uh, frescoes, and so on. And all these kind of things was, for the first time, it was really art for everyone. Yes. And this is something that yes. changes our minds. Yes, it's, it was also uh, a unifying factor, no? Yes, in Italy, for because sure. someone from the north and someone from the south hadn't seen the, oh, the country. Sure. They hadn't traveled. I mean, that's still true today to, to yes. some extent. Yes. But but through the Alinari's photography, it, it really unified the country and, yes. and created this Italian identity um, yes. you know, that we're still working it's towards in some ways. So, so fascinating. Once here, again, here we have our friends. Here we have Sofia. <laughs> yes. Once Uslenga. again, Sofia Uslengi. Yes. Here is in color, actually. Mm -hmm. you, you can see it very e easily. Uh, the, the nature, uh, it's not more, it's, it's a different series. But this series is called Art Noject, and with different uh, numbers. And here you see what's, what's happening. It happens that the, 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 the body or some of the objects which are uh, around her uh, become something different through once again the movement of the yeah. uh, of the camera so once again the uh, self portrait but the self portrait which transforms the subject in not in someone else but in a different uh, representation of herself. Mm -hmm. This is the idea uh, underlying this, uh, uh, this series. Naturally, going mm, in, in a sort of abstract direction is also, also something that has to do with decoration, which is something very, very important in the history of art, in the history of photography, right. and, and so on. Right. And uh, here, and uh, I would say, uh, in order to, to, to understand the, 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 uh, what we try to do. Yeah, with, show uh, us with perhaps, the, Francesco, if you would, the entire room with, so that they can get a the, sense. With this exhibition, here's uh, not by chance the, the title the, of the, the name, let's call it, of this room is uh, Pictorialism, mm -hmm. which was a, a, a movement. Right. Uh, starting at the end of the 19th century, uh, in which uh, photographers tried to uh, reach the same level of the high heart. Okay. It's a, it's a great problem of the uh, photograph. <laughs> it continues of the, to be, of the, no? uh, Now it's, uh, it's a little bit, let's say it's solved. Now, thank <laughs> <So>, God. <laughs> one thing we've solved. Yes. One thing. Right? Yes. <laughs> I don't know how much it will last. Yeah. But, yeah. And for example, Julia Margaret Cameron. That we see do you want to have a look? Do you want yes. to? Do you want to? How do you want to do? You want to go around, or you want to go start with, start her. Uh, okay. with Julia Margaret Cameron okay. because she was a sort. She could has to be considered actually the the mother of. Uh, pictorialism not only as a, as a woman photographer but as a photographer uh, right. uh, in general because she was one of the first photographers who staged her photography she, she took uh, her, her friends with her and she, they did uh, this kind of plays uh, working on uh, Erodia de, on the Shakespearean mm. themes or other other themes, and they put uh, they, they they did this kind of uh, stage photography one century okay. before uh, Cindy Sherman or, yeah. or Sandy Scoglin. It's fascinating, right. Right. and from here, so to say, the, the pictorialism started. And arrived till, till now, so it's uh, it's very interesting as a uh, as a process. Yes, I want to make sure, if you wouldn't mind, if the filmmaker could show us um, each one of her photographs that we have here, because you can really get a sense this idea that you're saying of staging, and yes. and now that you have said actually her objective was to to make photography into a fine art, yes, or you know at least have it on the same level, yes. Uh, is it, it's really important. And it's, it's interesting also, once again, the, the, the biography of Julia Margaret 
camera is, is fascinating. She was uh, in uh, <coughs> in uh, in England, and she she received her her, her first uh, uh, camera when she was already uh, a lady. It was not a young lady. It was not like uh, Federica Belli. <laughs> And she, she started to work, and in a very few years, she became so famous that the, the Victoria and Albert Museum right. dedicated her uh, a room, in a studio. She had her studio at the Victoria and Albert Museum. Wow. So, yes. It, it, and it was one of the first uh, acquisitions of the Victoria and Albert. And it's, it's a fascinating story. She was friend with uh, John Herschel, the astronomer, with many poets and uh, painters from the Pre-Raphaelite pre circle. It's, it's very fascinating. Right. And then she went to, to Calcutta. So, so many interesting stories also with, with her. Amazing. And, and probably a connection to here, no? But did, she, did she travel here for a period of time, or am I wrong? No. No. As far as I know, I would okay. say no, but okay, okay, you no, never that, know. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, could you, just if you would, if Francisco, if you would get um, the, those, those yes. pieces, because no, we don't want to miss them. Um, and on one side, there's a girl, and on the other side, there's a boy? Yes. Yeah? Yes, because, you know, it, it was also a way to, uh, to show the, the photographs and uh, to do uh, this kind. It, it was at the same time a, 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 photo, a photography wanted, which wanted to be artistic, as we yes. said, but at the same time was very private, right. something that was uh, related to an individual experience. It was the, 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 the period when the, the, the photographic album began to to be spread yeah. all over the Too world. Too bad it's no longer. Uh, no. It's now, no longer in now style. Now we have just the, 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 the files in our yeah. computer. Yeah. yeah, it's too bad. No. For those of us who love paper, <laughs> I just want to show the woman with the dog yes. because we need, we need, we know that she we need equality. <laughs> we need equality. I don't just want cat and I, I want woman with the dog, yes. right? Um, because this is Madame Dora. Yes. Okay. And um, there are a couple things you can tell us about Madame Dora, more than a couple. <laughs> but I wanted to I wanted to show our guests that this is Elsa Schiaparelli, who you'll know from the fashion world, and she was a rival, I guess we could say, of yes. Coco Chanel, yes. and very very famous. And I I want to particularly stop here for the most personal of reasons, which is yes. that she <laughs> invented hot pink. Um, what, what in Italian you call shocking pink, yes. you know? which I love the name, shocking pink. Um, and she looks so demure in this photograph, this young photograph when she was uh, yes. in, in the 20s, no? in 1926. Yes, in the 20s, you see she's, this is a typical uh, way of photographing of the so-called pictorialist uh, period. The, the out of focus, you see that she is not perfectly on focus. She has this, uh, this face, she's fading. Yeah. You, know, you have some just the, 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 the glimpse in the, in, the, in the eyes, and then the rest is, is fading. And this is a, this idea, once again, of being timeless, mm -hmm. you know, which is typical from, from this period. And it's typical from this period of fashion photography. Fashion right. photography is one of the most important ways of spreading photography all over the world. We, we know very well, uh, if we think about the, the most famous photographers of, of the world, many of their names come from the fashion, fashion photography. Yeah. So, you know. And uh, also because the, the, the subjects are very famous. Yes. Caparelli and, and, and many others, Coco Chanel and, and on and on. And here we have the, the, these uh, four works by, by, by Madame Dora and one from uh, Gita Carre, who was an Hungarian, Hungarian. living in, in, in Italy. And she was a, a real superstar. And in the fascist period, naturally being a superstar in the fascist period was not so 
uh, lucky for for her after the fascist <laughs> right, period. Right. But she was a. But at the same time, she 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 was able also to to, to photograph uh, the late uh, Pope uh, John Twenty Three. Mm. So she she and was the able. But yes, the but naturally. Yeah. Yeah. But in any case, uh, this was this idea of the 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 photography of the rich and famous. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Was the rich and famous of the time, and the photography. Madame Dora was a Viennese photographer, but who worked in in Paris. She worked uh, first with her uh, with her husband, who was Arthur Benda, mm -hmm. and then she left and had his own studio. So her, this, her once her again, uh, an history of uh, of a woman. Which was first uh, linked, strictly linked to her husband, and then uh, to, to her. Uh, Did she uh, sign as her husband initially? She she signed. Uh, we we have here the the right uh, image. You have Dora Arthur Benda Vienna. You have the three the, names. The three say. names. The studio was Dora. They really are beautiful. And they are very fascinating. They are. They're just beautiful. Timeless is a word we have to yes. remember. Walter, I wanted to, you to show us one last room okay. of Giulia right. Parlato, yes. ma, a contemporary artist. Yes. And then we can go perhaps and have a couple of questions, see if our guests. Um, I do when? want to invite our guests, if they have questions um, for Walter, it would be wonderful. Yes. We're going to go out on the terrace, um, so definitely don't miss the view of Florence uh, as, yes. as the sun goes down, <laughs> right? We've had some hot days, uh, very, a very prolonged summer here in Florence. But uh, first we'll see Giulia. And would you like to tell us a little bit about Giulia Parlato? Giulia is, uh, is working as another young uh, photographer working uh, between once again Italy and uh, UK right. so she's uh, she's one of the typical story of stories of this period and uh, she works with uh, the idea of the archive right and uh, and that's why she is here actually we we, we did this tour but actually, when, when the, 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 the people come in, in the show, this will be uh, is, uh, the, the first room they see. Okay. And it's, uh, as a, uh, it was conceived as the first Walk room because, as we as we because you have, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a statement of the show because you have in the vitrine the daguerreotypes of the beginning. Of, of, of the beginning of the history of photography. Mm. We are here, you, you, if you look at the dates, they are 1853, 1858, and so on. So it's really the beginning of the story. The, the girl type is really the, the first photograph we, we know. No? Uh, now, what are good uh, it's, uh, it's Huh? What are daguerreotypes? Oh, it's so complicated oh, to explain, but uh, <laughs> it's it's the first words. it's the first technique okay. which was invented by Monsieur Daguerre, right. who invented photography in this way, and it's uh, uh, and it's a kind uh, the, the very important thing of the daguerreotype that you can see also here is that it looks like a mirror. Mm. Okay. And uh, it's a, a unique copy, so it lacks one of the most important characteristic of photography, the, 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 the possibility. The repeatability. Yes, the yeah. repeatability. Mm -hmm. So it's something that it's... But it's photography because it's done by the light uh, on, on a surface. On a... So right. uh, this is, so to say, and this is very important, uh, the, 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 things I, the thing I was saying about the, the, the mirror. Because it's the idea that everyone has of photography, yeah. the, the mirror of reality, yeah. which is not true, actually. <laughs> this, this is going to be for when we're outside, <laughs> yes. right? I'm going to ask you but, about that. But we start from here. So, but right. uh, 
going back to our exhibition because it's, it's it's too complicated. But going back to our exhibition, here we have the the, the beginning of uh, the history of photography, and you have at the same time the archive because they all come from the Alinari archives. Right. And on the walls, you have a contemporary photographer photographing the archives. So it's a sort of mise en abîme, as the. the, the which the is what we're saying. seeing with Julia yes. Parlato. Yes, okay. which is uh, what uh, Julia Parlato does. She works on archives, as you see, and she works on these archives, uh, showing what lacks. In the, uh, yeah. in the archives. You have something, yeah. you have more void than, uh, than uh, how do you say, more empty than full, right. for example. It's almost huh? zen. Right? Yes, it's yes, yes. There's almost a zen element and to it. She is back on the black and white photograph instead of color, which is also uh, important. Small sizes, we were used uh, in the 80s and 90s to have these huge photographs, three yeah. meters, four, six, and yeah. so on. Now they are going back to small sizes, something more intimate, probably. And she gives us this, uh, once again, uh, documentary from on one side, photography. On the other side, a kind of a surrealistic mm. view of these objects, because you, 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 you never have the, the, the entire. Right. You always have a fragment. Right. So you cannot say, this is it. There's almost like a frustration of, yes. oh, I, I can't put it together yes. exactly. And you know? that's what uh, Julia wants to, yeah. to tell us. Yeah. Also regarding the archives, regarding the past, our relation with the past. We don't know everything. We, we know something, right. but not we don't know everything. Regarding and sometimes the, it's, it's really... We are missing it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I something. love this. The, the title of this one is The Theft of Caravaggio. Caravaggio yes. Okay. Which is uh, Caravaggio Missing. So to say. Caravaggio's <laughs> Missing. Yeah. And it's fascinating because you, you don't know if it's really uh, something that has been stolen yeah. or something that is, for example, being restored. Right. So you, you lack the, the, the image. And it doesn't want, she doesn't want to uh, explain totally. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. The, the fact is that you are uh, looking at something that it's not complete. But but while there are guests are dying to know if the Caravaggio was really stolen, should what we tell think, them? What do you think about? Should we have a vote? <laughs> what do you think about? <laughs> I think we're going to have them vote. Okay, let's yes. have them vote, and then we can talk about it outside. But um, but Francisco, if you wouldn't mind, I'd I'd love you to get all of these images for Julia and. Um, I, I think I think we can get a sense, you know, of what she's trying to do with this emptiness, as you say, yes. with the missing pieces that we're always, you know, that, that makes us get up in the morning to look <laughs> yes. for that missing piece, et cetera. And um, I, I, I think we can go out here, yes. you know, into the terrace. And uh, let me just open here. Yeah. So this is this is wow. the, the other work of art, <laughs> wow. right? This is the other work of art. Uh, we can just take a look, and I I'm I trust that hey. our film <laughs> person is capturing as well this beautiful city. So here we are. This is where the, the Villa Bardini is. Yes, right? <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. bad. Um, this is a good day, right? Yes. <laughs> and up, good weather. <laughs> good weather, exactly. Up a little bit further, we have Forte di Belvedere, which is the yes. other side of the show, the yes. other part of the show. So those of you that are in Florence, um, do go up to the Fortezza, and you'll see mostly contemporary works. Not um, no, or the, a mix. the dialogue continues. Yeah. The, the difference is that uh, the dialogue is uh, uh, between it, the, uh, let's say, the historical works are not from the beginning, but from the 40s, 50s of the uh, 20th century till the 70s. Okay. So it's it's closer. But it's uh, always a, a dialogue, and I think it's very interesting also there. 
I yes. would uh, really recommend to really. see both. Really, yeah, it was hard. So a hard decision, <laughs> which yeah. which one to to look at with our guests. I have um, some of your questions, and and while we're answering, if there are others that come up, um, I'm being sent them here. We have one from Sasha Samuels, and she says, "What clues?" do you see that hint at the trajectory of women photographers in the future? What might you predict we see moving forward? If, oh, that's a big if, question. If I understand well the, if I understand well the, 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 the question, yeah. I would say that my, my dream is that we don't need to do this kind of exhibitions anymore. Because uh, we won't talk about uh, women and men, but simply we have uh, uh, reached a real, uh, how do you say, equality. equality. And so we, we, we won't need to, to have this kind of, uh, uh, how do you say, reconoscimento. Right, or emphasis. Maybe? Yes, this emphasis, focus. this focus. Yeah on the gender. I hope we will be able to to overwhelm this this kind of right. thing. And, and so then I think that we, we, we will have to, to look at, uh, at the works. Right. We have to wait and see. Yes, for sure. Okay. As usual. But you're <laughs> telling me that you would take, in the future, we're going to take off the exclamation point. Yes, I hope so. You're right. Right, this because that be, was a that was a big but, question. Is the exclamation yes. point for the show? Yes. No. Because yes, because uh, I mean I uh, I hope it uh, it works once again, but the the, the idea was really to uh, this exclamation mark was uh, conceived uh, from one side as a, a sort of homage to the uh, early women photographer. Yeah to say, okay, you, you have done a, a really a great job for everyone, not for yourself, maybe, but for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's something that is really an homage to them. At the same time, uh, this photographer related, this exclamation mark related to the, to the contemporary photographers is a way to uh, underline uh, their will of being still photographers. I mean to use photography in the uh, also traditional sense mm -hmm. in uh, their, uh, their belief in the possibility of photography of narrating the world once again. Right. This right. is why the exclamation. Yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. Great, interesting. Let's see. I have another question. Uh, Wayne McArdle. Our group is wondering if the Wolt sisters were influenced by the Surrealists, including Man Ray and Lee Miller. You know, I, I think that Surrealism was uh, uh, influencing everything and everyone in that period. Yeah. And so probably we can imagine that even if, even if uh, we have also to, uh, to think and to, to know that uh, Man Ray's and overall Lee Miller's work were not so diffused and so well known in Italy at that mm. time. Mm. So maybe they have seen something, but I think it was more uh, a fact of uh, real, of the overall with uh, with uh, Vanda uh, th this link with uh, with the futuristic group that uh, was also in in Trieste we have to think that in, in Italy there was a, a, so to say a futuristic group in each and every town right. <laughs> so it was something that was really spread they were talking all about. over the yes right much more than uh, than surrealism surrealism what wasn't so diffused in Italy at mm. that time, mm. we have to say, mm. so. Interesting, interesting. Let's see. Um, a question from Rhea. 
I wondered, okay, here's another one. I wondered about surrealism, surrealism in relation to Io Piu Gatto and its connection with surrealism. Is this an isolated work? Did she know any of the surrealists? <laughs> so you've answered the question, no? Yes, you, I think yeah. so. It's a, it was something was it was something that was in the air. Sometimes it's uh, it's easier than we than we think. It was in the air, mm. like something is in the air now in, yeah. the, in the cultural, uh, and it's the same. Yeah, ideas go. And, what is your favorite? I, what is the most striking element of the exhibition, or what is your favorite part of the exhibition? Oh, oh. <laughs> my favorite part probably is simply the the dialogue. Uh, I, I like this kind of uh, of dialogues between uh, past and, and and present because I I think that. Uh, it's, it's not a, a great idea, but uh, really, I think that uh, in this way, we we look in a, in a different way to the old works and to the new works. I mean, if you see a, an exhibition of ten young photographers, okay, you you know more or less what uh, what you say, and you have an idea of what you are going to to see. When you see uh, ten young photographers put together in a totally different situation, you're probably more surprised of what you see and you have a different point of view. You can have right. also a different point of right. view. This, this is my idea, more from the contemporary side than from the, from the historical side, so to say. And probably for the women, I mean, the 10 women, to find themselves exhibited alongside of On the Wolves oh, or yes. Madame Dura, is is it's life changing, you know? Yes. I mean, it's life changing for us as we walk through the show. But I would imagine. Yes, you know, they were them, they were very uh, satisfied and yeah. also uh, a little bit worried. And I say bit when, worried. when yes, when I when I told them I I would like I would like to to do this kind of exhibition. So you will be together with uh, Van der They said, okay, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> are you wow. sure? Because they they were naturally proud of it. But at the same time, if you are intelligent as they are, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit intimidating. Yes, yes. Yeah. But finally, at the opening, they were all so, so satisfied, I think. Yeah. Walter, we're going to ask you the million dollar question. Mm. Let's try. Which is. Remembering what, is what you said before, <laughs> yeah, well, hypothetically, a hypothetical million. This is the million dollars, right? Uh, okay. You have, okay. you have the million dollars. Also two million. Yeah. Um, you said that, that photography doesn't mirror reality, okay? And I think that that's a common misconception that it does. And so I, I'd ask if you could just really briefly talk to that point, um, because I, I'm sure it's something that you often... <laughs> Discuss. Yes. Yeah. You, you could ask to my, how do you say, uh, Alievi. Your uh, students. Yes, my students. Because yeah. you, you're a professor <laughs> at the they're academy. They're so bored you know? of my... They're bored. Oh, well. <laughs> no, no. Okay, but they, I, I, hope they are not, I hope they are this not looking at bored, this. I'm sure. This, uh, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, uh, photography can be not the mirror of the reality, for sure. can show us a part of the reality. But it's a part of the reality always looked through the eyes of someone. So it's not the it's not a mirror. Mm -hmm. First of all. Uh, secondly, I'm convinced that uh, with this uh, idea of being a mirror, photography has been able during this more or less two centuries to tell us the biggest lies that we mm. ever heard and that we ever saw. Yeah. So this is what I think about photography is uh, sometimes it's, it's really something that uh, tells you what's happening in front of the camera. Right. But so many times the, the photography tells us what's in the mind of the photographer. And I think it's so fascinating, this ambiguity. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the, the, the word I like best to define photography as a medium. We have the music coming up. Can you, <laughs> I wonder. 
suddenly we have music playing, yes. which means it's the end, <laughs> right? <laughs> when the music comes on, we have to say goodbye. Yes. Um, Walter, thank you so much. It's really been an, a, a pleasure and an honor uh, to speak with you, to see your show together with Emanuela Sestri and, um, you know, a thousand of these days, really, as <laughs> yes. they say in Italian, cento di questi giorni, yes. let's say mille di questi <laughs> giorni. Um, and, and um, you know, to the Alinardi Archive, to the Alinardi uh, Foundation of, for Photography, Calliope Arts, the exhibition donor, uh, I want to thank the Florentine as well as a partner in organizing this event and um, Ciara Firenze as the organizer, co-organizer and, and sponsor and the Comune di Firenze because the show was developed in conjunction with the Comune yes. di Firenze. So um, thank you so much and thank you so much and we will see you next time. I'd like actually to end just with no words and on the view of Florence. And that is your goodbye for tonight. Grazie. Thank you.